area. So welcome to The Real Build. I'm your host, Bill Ryman, your broker builder. And today I have a special guest coming from Lafayette, Louisiana. He started his home building business at the age of 23 and has been aiming to push the envelope in his community for the past two years. Along with that, he's on a mission to produce quality homes and customer service that exceeds expectations. Did I also mention that he is also a realtor? So he's a builder realtor, similar to me, which I love that too. Uh, the guy he wear this guy wears many hats. So Johnny Lee, welcome to the Real Build. I'm excited to finally have you on. How you doing? I'm good, man. Man, it's a pleasure. Um, especially since you know I've seen all of your previous guests, and they're like pretty successful in what they're doing. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm a new guy. <laughs> And you asked me to be on here, so it's very, very, very much uh, humbling. No, I'm excited to have you on, like I said, man, because you're new to the building business, and, and that's what I wanted to actually talk to you about. And and I, I, um, and I want to apologize to my audience, first of all, because I didn't do an episode last week, so I'm glad to be back, too, because of this moving thing. As you can see, all the boxes in the back, it's been quite hectic lately. But, no, I'm excited to have you on just because, you know, you're new to the industry. There's a lot of people that have considered that I listen to my show that consider being in the building industry or construction industry too. And that's why I wanted to have more of a conversation with you about, you know, how you got started. Cause you're only two years into it. You're grinding, you're pushing, you're trying to, you know, get ahead and so on. I've been involved in it my whole entire life and you're coming from a different situation. So that's why I'm ex definitely excited to have you on, man, because what I've been seeing, you're, you're doing a great job. You're taking advice of other people too. And, and that's what it's all about too. So for sure. But, um, what I like to get started with is, you know, just tell me about your background, where you're from, what you did, everything to do with who is Johnny Lee. Oh man. Okay. Uh, so right now I'm 25 years old and yeah, you said I did start the business at 23. So two years in the business. Um, I am one of eight kids. Uh, so you know, a lot of fun growing up and uh, two, two very supportive parents uh, who actually were from uh, Vietnam. They were refugees from Vietnam in the eighties and seventies. And they, uh, you know, immigrated over here. And you know, whenever I was growing up, we didn't grow up in the pretty side of town per se. Mm -hmm. So it was like lower income, small little city called uh, Amelia. And you know, as time went by, uh, our living conditions started getting better and better. Uh, so we moved from state to state, city to city. And then I found myself in a, you know, a good high school, um, Dutch town high school, I graduated from there. And then right after high school, man, I went, straight to work into my, my dad's business, uh, which is welding. And, you know, uh, made pretty, pretty good amount of money uh, coming right out of high school. Uh, but man, the 12 hour shifts, seven days a week, you know, you barely have time to do anything, especially when you're young and you want to, you know, explore as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided, you know, maybe welding really isn't for me. And after that, you know, I went to, uh, I applied to LSU. Uh, for mechanical engineering uh did that for about two years and another uh, another moment where i was like man is this is this really what i want to do because at the time i wasn't really motivated and finishing you know or in that career path um <clears throat> i really didn't see too much upside so after i dropped out about two years after um and flat flash forward to today, um, building houses, man. <laughs> so that's a little bit about me, you know, before I go too far into it. Uh, that's where I come from. And, you know, that's what I'm doing now. No, I love that. And I mean, growing up with eight siblings too, uh, that's, that's crazy right there. And I mean, I'm sure it was, there was some competitive nature <laughs> there too. And, and, you know, that kind of pushed you, it's still pushing you, I'm sure to this day, you know, having that many siblings as well, because that's, 
you know, having a family, hey, that's big. And then you going in the welding business, I mean, that's awesome to hear too because, I mean, you had to work from a young young age and, and I could respect that too because, you know, I came from a background not with eight siblings. I had two other siblings, but we always had to work. And I preached on this on my show constantly about, you know, having that worth that work ethic and that's pushed you to where you are today too, you know, so um let's i mean let's discuss your life a little bit more too you know how so you know you went to, you went to college you are you you had that background you went to college and then then you got into construction so why why would you choose construction over other industries i mean you know as well as i do it's not an easy profession it's a lot of work uh it's a lot of hard work too it's not something that you just can walk into and a lot of people find that out pretty quickly in this business so why construction why construction man uh so after college uh i took a little hiatus about two years where i was just exploring things opportunities here and there it wasn't till about 2017 where my eyes you know started to open up about entrepreneurship uh, so I, I started, you know, putting my finger here and there, here and there, figuring out what I would like to do. And then I found myself on a uh, forum called uh, Bigger Pockets. Okay. Sure you're familiar mm-hmm. with that. Uh, so I started uh, doing a lot of research on there, educating myself, stuff like that. Um, and it started to taper more towards apartment investing and not construction. So I did that for about a year, educating myself. Uh, uh, surrounded myself with those, you know, people that are involved in that industry. And then I think it was uh, in October or November of that year, 2017, my uncle called me. And at the time he was building his uh, third house. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's he's from Lafayette and the main reason why I got started. But it was like, hey, Johnny. Uh, what you been up to you know what are you doing uh, with your time and I told him everything as far as you know where I plan on going what I'm doing right now he was like uh, what do you think about coming to Lafayette you know uh, seeing things uh, in the construction industry you know see how uh, you like it see if you would want to uh, start a business doing this and two months goes by and I'm like eh, construction I don't know man you know I rather you know invest invest in real estate it's so flashy at the time uh and then two months passed uh and then i decided okay i'm not going anywhere so what's what's there to lose you know so i uh committed to what he offered i packed my bags i was living in houston at the time packed my stuff moved to lafayette i was like all right let's get into this and from that point on uh my construction career began. And I mean, that's, that's a hell of a commitment to make too. I don't know where out of the, out of the blue there too, man. I mean, for, for him to call you and say, yeah, what do you think about getting into construction? And and, I mean, everybody knows obviously with the bigger pockets, a lot of the guys I've had on, even my recent guest, uh, he learned a lot from that, that podcast as well. Um, Darius Barrett and he's a, a real estate investor or so on but for you to take a hard right from the real estate path and go into the construction path is is a big time different thing too but I mean you probably were at a phase too where you didn't know what you were what you were planning or what you wanted to do I was in that same phase I mean I sold cars for a little and then I got to the point where I was going to get a sales job in sports and so on. Cause I mean, growing up, I did not like construction. I even talked about this because when you're out in the sun and the hot sun, the state of Florida digging the ditches, I'm sure you know now too, being in Louisiana, it ain't cold. So, (laughs) you know, it's, it's, it's hot out there and you know, it, you, you get into this business and and you learn to really love it and appreciate every aspect of it as well. So, I mean, that had to be something, but you, you were kind of facing the unknown. So, I mean, what, what really made you make that leap into the business? I mean, was it just your, you had nowhere else to go. And then when you started, how much, what were you doing with your uncle that really made you say, Hey, I'm going to start building houses. 
So uh, my uncle, he's also a business owner uh, and in welding as well. Like okay. Said, um, so whenever he built uh, those two other houses, he noticed those numbers, you know, could probably make a good bit of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, whenever I went to meet him uh, about his house, or the third house that he was doing, he broke down the numbers, showed me exactly what's possible in this industry. And I was like, okay, okay. I can start doing this, you know, build up a little bit of capital and maybe, maybe, just maybe, invest in apartments. And then two years goes by, I, I'm still not thinking about apartments yet. I'm just focused on uh, construction, you know. Yeah, so, so basically, you know, you, you focus, so the few years went by and then you having that focus on construction, sorry, it's like lightning. That's why I had that pause right near me, but yeah, I don't know if I'm going to lose power or not, but uh, no, I mean, you having that main focus. So you were on, had that focus on the investment side of it, then you getting into construction, you saw the numbers that you can do in construction too. And that's what I wanted to get into. So you're, you're at the beginning of your career. Um, you know, you're, you're seeing that, okay, I can make good money doing this if I do it right. Cause there's some builders out there, as you know, too, that probably don't make an, any money or nearly enough uh, for the aggravation you have to go through with this business, <laughs> you know, cause it's not easy. And I, and I don't want to make it sound easy on this show because it's really not, you know, and you, you know that as well, cause you're full in now with this business. There's so many moving pieces to it. So obviously, you know, let's, I want to get into the steps kind of that you took, uh, to, you know, get, learn the business and so on, uh, as you've kind of developed your company and so on. So, you know, how did you, working for your uncle, obviously, that's where you started. So how did you really start learning the trade? Because me as a kid, you know, I grew up in it. My dad made me do all the little odds and ends. Um, you know, I renovated a house myself and so on. So I really learned how to do these things because I was forced to, you know, do it. He put me in situations where he's like, okay, this is how you do it. I'll come back and see how you did you know, that kind of thing where you kind of force yourself, you want to do a good job. You don't want to mess up because you know, somebody's going to be, you know, cussing you out or whatever. So how'd you learn the trade? So, uh, whenever he started building that uh, third house of his, um, I really dove in with him and okay. I took time every single day to make time for, you know, visiting the job sites, see what's going on, taking notes, you know, educating myself. And then, at the same time, asking as much questions as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, so I asked numerous, numerous questions to him, to the subs, you know, to all the trades involved. I was talking to everybody. And at home, I would self-educate. I would uh, learn the trade, you know, uh, through all those resources online. And, you know, over time, over time, um, that knowledge built up to where I was, you know, comfortable or competent enough to start my own spec house. Um, so yeah, mainly through self-educating, uh, hands-on as well, a little bit of hands-on, uh, asking questions to mm-hmm. subs, trades, contractors, and you know, that's basically how I got started. Well, let's, let's go deeper into that too. I'm going to pull stuff out of you too, because that's what I'm good at. That's why I'm the host here. So <laughs> let's go deep into that though. I mean, you said you're asking the subs questions, like what questions were you asking your subcontractors? What were, you know, what were some of the things you would do? Who, who would you ask? Were you, you know, if say, you know, you got your concrete guys there, what kind of questions are you asking them? What are you asking your pain? You know, cause what you said is key. I mean, it's, it's big cause you, you had to self teach yourself. I mean, you can read all the books you want. I've said this in the past too, in this business, you can read all the books you want. There's guys that get their licenses just off of reading the book. They'll go take the course, their book smart, you know, but there's better contractors out there that, you know, it took them forever to pass the test cause they're not so book smart, but they build a better quality house and a better finished product cause they're more serious about the job. So you know, what questions were you asking your subcontractors for somebody new to the business or whatever? Okay, so whenever I approach these uh, subs or any trade in that matter, uh, I always apply the same principle. Okay. okay. How 
and why. Mm-hmm. So whatever they're doing, I want to ask them how they're going to do it and why they're doing it that way. And whenever they, you know, I, I just ask those two questions and I sit back and I'm just listening, listening, absorbing as much as I can and taking all the notes I can. Mm-hmm. So that's man, basically <laughs> how I uh, learn about every single trade that goes within the house. Yeah. And see you going up to them and actually asking them how and why that's the biggest difference between you and some of these other people that would just go by the book or so on, or listen to a podcast. And, and that's why, like I said, I want to have you on and get more in depth into this too, because of the steps, there's so many steps to this. So, you know, you ask your painter, or you, uh, let's go to the concrete guy. You ask your concrete guy, well, how are you doing the, the, the finished floor and the slab and all that? How are you pouring? How are you doing the footers and all that kind of stuff? too and and you know for you to do that is puts you ahead you know and ups you because you're learning you're writing down and I actually said this too in the past when I was in sales with car sales too that's the way to learn that's the way to go go all in on something is actually study it write it all down learn the product learn it as much as possible I did it in houses too even though I was working in them I still before I even sold you know I remember the first house I sold I literally would write down every single thing almost like a feature sheet and that would stick in my head because of the retention of me writing the pro of writing it down and constantly reviewing it i knew everything and then i ended up selling the house it's no different than building if you know everything know everything that goes into it and you're so meticulous to every single little detail on the house that's what's going to better you than the next guy you know so like whenever uh i was uh working with my uncle man you should see the logs that i had from each each and every day I broke it down to timestamps, you know, what was being done and what's up, man. It's a good bit of notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, see, that's, that's, that's what sets you apart though, too, man. And, and I mean, like, um, obviously one of the topics I wanted to brush on is like the training aspect, like we've been talking about too. Did you have any prior training besides working with your uncle or did you just kind of dive fully in? You just went so uh, absolutely no training man uh, <laughs> i didn't even know what a two by four was oh wow <laughs> yeah. so i had the slightest idea of construction but mm-hmm. what i did have was the willingness to learn yeah to ask questions and then the ability to commit to what i wanted to do and those are the two main things you know if you're a, a builder or you want to be a builder so those are the two qualities that you need you know in order to succeed and grow in this business. Well, since I've known you too, that's why another reason I wanted to have you on. And and since me and you met through Arte, you know, I remember me and you were talking about you'd ask questions. I mean, you'd ask other builders that are in Arte questions too. You were always learning. You were always trying to ask, connect, and make and reach out and and because you you and I can tell you actually cared. You wanted to learn. So most people would sit there and they'd be afraid to ask. They'd be afraid to you know I don't want to you know, approach this person. Yeah. Yeah. And, but you were different and that's why I respected you too. And I'm sure, you know, guys like Damian Heim and Brad Blair and, you know, these other guys that are building, Brad's a newer builder too, you know, but Brad's killing it up in Canada. And, and it's just, that's what we want. We're here to help each other because we all have the same mindset too. That's the thing. We all want to do a better product. We all want to be better to our customers. We all want to sell and build a shit ton of houses you know and and but we want to over deliver but we also want to take over our states and keep you know because we got such big mindsets with this whole thing and we're all willing to help each other and work together and that's why you stood out to me too big time man and you know so uh so what do you what would you recommend if you had to do it all over again like say you were new in the business what would you recommend somebody new trying to get into this in, in the construction do how would you go differently about your kind of path okay uh if i was to redo it man i would um i would go to a local you know builder building company i would apply for a job there and then i would learn from the ground up what it all takes to build a house Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, like I said, you got to self-educate as well. You can't just rely on that portion of the job. Self-educate, um, 
you know, get other resources, uh, where it's your network, stuff like that. But mainly, you know, um, just getting your hands on experience, man. That's the best way to learn. Mm -hmm. No. Going through those mistakes yourself, man, it's, it's, nothing can teach you better than that. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I 100% agree because I preach on that. I think every time I have a builder on too is, is that the best way to learn is actually personal experience and going through the house and doing the actual things that you should do and seeing it. I mean, we have a laborer that works for us. I used to be a laborer growing up and, and that right there, that laborer has the choice. He can up his level and up his game. He can get ahead. He can become a superintendent. He can keep building or he can stay as a laborer. You know, that's, that's the difference. And as a laborer, you learn a lot. Yeah. You do all the odds and ends on the jobs. You got to clean job sites. You got to dig ditches. You got to do some hard stuff, but that's making you appreciate the business to get to that higher level and learn the business to get to that superintendent level where you really got to care at the superintendent level. I'm grateful. You know, my brother's doing a lot of that for us too. And, and, you know, cause my brother and me are so meticulous. It's that we make our labor that meticulous as well. So, and that's what it's all about is kind of learning, building your way up and so on. So you're spot on man with, the being present i always tell people too they should i always tell people too they should shadow a builder yeah. at least for free for a month and just ask or say hey i'll i'll work for free let me do what you want me to do find a good one and just work there and part-time for a little bit for free and just see what, how he does it go around his sites and learn it see reality yeah. Yeah. and also another thing that i did uh while i was helping my uncle i uh so you know what Habitat for Humanity is, right? Mm -hmm. They let you volunteer on the construction sites. So man, while I was, you know, educating, learning through his uh, house, I was also volunteering at the local Habitat for Humanity. Nice. Uh, get my hands on experience, you know, framing, uh, foundation work, all that stuff. So if they don't, if they can't find a builder that's willing to accept them, you know, to help them out, they can go to Habitat for Humanity and get that hands on experience as well. You know? Yeah. So I'll give them help. They're always looking for help. Yeah, that's huge right there, too. I didn't even think about that. Because, they're I mean, Habitat for Humanity is everywhere, too. So you really have no excuse not to learn <laughs> hands-on. And and they're always looking for help. I mean, if you haven't swung a hammer in your life, they'll, they'll, tr they'll teach you how to swing a hammer, you know, or shoot a nail gun or something. Safety first, obviously, you know, but... <laughs> But yeah, that's that's a great that's actually a great one right there too because you can see these houses constructed from the ground up just by working with that too. I mean, obviously in different areas, uh, how homes are built differently. Your, yours are different than where ours are, and so on. But yeah, it's it's a great way to learn, and I highly recommend people, like you said, getting out there and being hands on. That's the best way to do it, yep. for sure. Um, so. You formed, you started uh, going going deeper into this whole topic too. You you started, so after working with your uncle for a little while and really starting to learn the business and liking it and so on, you you said you did that for Spec House. So, and I'm, that, I'm guessing that's where Empire Builders was formed two years ago and that's where your, your baby came to life there. So why empire builders why'd you select that name or how'd you go about the naming process how'd you how'd you let's start there and then we'll go into you know your development and how you choose to do other certain things still sure sure <clears throat> so empire builders man whenever i first started out uh, i had two uh two names i can't quite remember where the inspiration came from but it was either empire builders or trillium Okay. So the business model originally, it was a little bit different to what I had uh, or I am doing now. Um, and the more I kept repeating each name, I was like, hmm, Empire Builders, Trillium. And I started asking friends and family. I was like, Empire Builders? That's funny. <laughs> it just stuck, man, you know? I, I honestly don't know where that name came from. It just dropped into my head. Yeah, and it was meant to be, right? Yeah, and then you got to go. Then the family obviously had their their. But you probably are, you probably had a few of the family members go the other name too, and it really started making you think. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's where it came from, you know. Uh, and I'm 
pretty uh, proud of that name. Yeah, which is awesome, man. And that's what that's that's what you want. I mean, with us, with RK Rhyme Construction, obviously it's family owned, operated. My dad started the business, and you know we're all proud of the name too, just because it's it's we're going to carry it on. Obviously, I have higher intentions of the company and more ambitious as far as how I want it to grow, um, and that's where I'm going at now with our projects and everything too. I've exceeded quite a bit what we were doing so which is which is great um but it's it's an important thing too because it's got to be something that's meaningful it's got to be something that's going to stand with you for the for the test of time uh and and it's something that means something to you too so which is great so when you first started empire builders you got your name together so your first step obviously was and i remember when i met you we were discussing this a little bit was this the spec house was this your first step with the company or what was your first your first Uh, endeavor with the company did you do any custom or did you just do spec to start or how'd you go about it that first spec was how we started you know but before that you know i told you i was helping my uncle uh, build his third house Mm -hmm. got all that experience but First spec house was, you know, the first endeavor where I spent a lot of time on that sucker. <laughs> a lot of learning, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, how we got started with that was um, back in 2018. Um, I planned for that house. I think it was a thousand man hours just getting the blueprint down. Wow. I was getting inspiration from here, from there, from everybody around me. And a thousand hours later, came up with that blueprint. A uh, lot of time, a lot of effort, but uh, you know, it turned out as a successful project. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, a thousand hours, and you said it's, it was inspiration too, but how'd you get that inspiration? Was it just mainly listening to people around you? Were you asking a lot of questions? Were you kind of, I mean, obviously you being in real estate too, has probably helped you because you're seeing what people want, hearing what people want as well. So was that where some of the inspiration? So how did you get the inspiration for your first project? Yeah, yeah, yeah most definitely. So uh, I'm a realtor with Keller Williams, and I was basically studying the market. Uh, okay. I was seeing what sold, what didn't sold, what didn't sell, and uh, you know, online trends, local trends. I'll piece them all together, see what worked, see what didn't. You know, just free flowing, just playing around with it. Because at the time, you know, it was just me, and I could make all the decisions that I wanted to. <laughs> you know? uh, and then that allowed me to be creative, and you know, uh, push the envelope here in Lafayette. And what was what was the first house that you built? Was it what what was the kind of layout of it? Let's talk about that. Okay, it was a four bedroom, three bathroom. It was twenty five hundred square feet. It's based off an open floor plan, so. Uh, I, I really like the idea here in Louisiana mm-hmm. where we have an open floor plan where everybody can connect in the central areas mm-hmm. and also at the same time, you know, have indoor and outdoor living. And that was the main concept of that idea, uh, which we were able to succeed. And then we wanted to also maximize the use of space in that house. So every nook and cranny we thought of plan for, you know, and uh, man. Yeah. And I think me and you have talked about that too, because we're similar here. Obviously everybody, everybody likes open spaces and so on, but I'm so big on, and that's why a lot of people have me review their plans that I work with because I'm so big on utilizing the space, but also I can find every little thing within a house too. I just had, did one that was a 6,000 square foot house and I could find literally every single little thing to make it work uh or storage too because storage is so important here we don't have basements so you have to yeah so you have to figure out okay where i can put storage here i can add this into the attic i can do this here uh we can do an ac storage space here for this because that's very important to people too and obviously i mean you've talked about this in the past and on your resale and resale, resale, resale. That's all I think about whenever I'm, I'm working with somebody and some people are always going to like what they like. Um, you know, they're going to want what they want. They're, they're going to tell you, I'm going to die in this house. It's up to my kids. I could care less about resale. I want what I want, which is fine. That's what you are doing. You're a custom builder. 
um, as a custom builder, but I'm still going to, I just, I was, I'll go to another example. I'm working with somebody now. It's a single story, 3000 square foot house, but they didn't want a hot tub. So down here on a 3000 square foot house, the house will probably be worth over $2 million. You're not going to have a hot tub on a resale. That's a no, no down here. Everybody's going to ask, where's the hot tub? Why didn't they do a spa? Why, why wouldn't they, you know? And, and I told them that and they're like, well, we don't really want to, we'd rather put the money somewhere else. Well, in the scheme of a $2 million house, it's not that much money. So I have to tell them that as their builder and tell them, listen, you got to think resale. I don't care what you say as far as, you know, you guys are younger, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You go to sell this place. It's going to be a problem, you know, because people don't want to deal with that. They don't want to deal with the later on. If they're buying a newer house, they just want to be moved and ready. So, you know, and they, they're like, yeah, you're right. We'll put the, we'll put the, they go, we'll put the stupid hot tub, but <laughs> you know, so it's, it, that's the things like, and you're figuring that out. I'm sure. Uh, and especially being in real estate, me being a broker, it's helped me too, because I've, I've done some, a lot of real estate and you learn, you learn the wants and needs, you know, those, a lot of people are still looking for openness now, supposedly they're saying the trend is going to be more division because of this COVID stuff, which I don't see it. You know, I really don't. I think it's still going to be the openness people coming from up North. They want to let the outside in you know, let the air in the house and so on. So, and I'm sure you know all this being in the real estate position as well. So also with that first project, what I was able to do as well was uh, I wanted to put myself in the homeowner's uh, shoes. So I would make those decisions for that blueprint based off of, okay, how would this affect this, that, that, that. Mm -hmm. And then I would continue along that path for that whole blueprint. Yeah. That's another tip, you know, if, uh, somebody would uh, like to start building houses you know, look at it from other people's perspective mm -hmm. apply it to your own. yeah and especially in the spec house spec house world too because i mean you you're the one selling that house you don't sell that house it's your money tied up in the project and and you know you really have to be in somebody else's thought process and and figure every little thing out that they're wanting, whether it's big kitchen, big closets, open space, this, you know, lots of storage, lot, you know, and just be creative with it too. And, and that's, that's the challenge that you had to face. So, I mean, why did you choose, obviously, I mean, probably now you're competing against your uncle too. So that's probably interesting too, right? Well, uh, actually, uh, he's, he's out of the business. Uh, Is he? Okay. After, uh, after I took the, took the, took the, took the lead yeah uh, he actually stepped back and didn't know if we were gonna have some family competition there you know <laughs> what i mean so <laughs> that, yeah that. no that's 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 always good too i'm surprised one of those eight siblings hasn't came into the business oh, yet <laughs> they actually uh running their own businesses so okay good I good i think four of us are uh, running our own businesses family entrepreneurs there you go very unlikely but <laughs> yeah. um so i mean so let's go back into your first project so obviously everybody that is listening or wondering how to get into the building world besides just getting a license you did a spec home that's the way you chose to do it unless you have a custom home where you're using somebody else's money and building them personally a home or you have i, I mean how did you get the funds to fund your first project? I mean, obviously you can get investors and bank. And so how did you personally do it? So uh, for our spec, first spec house, uh, it was mainly investors, uh, okay. local people, uh, friends and family, you know, within our network. Okay. Um, so what I did <clears throat> was I created a business plan and a uh, return rate that, you know, every party would uh, be happy with. And then I approached, you know, multiple, multiple investors, pitched them, pitched them, pitched them. And then I found a few that were generous enough and uh, you know, trusted me enough to see my vision through. And that's how I got the funds for the first house. So you basically had to sell yourself and sell your, pro your, your vision and be an entrepreneur and, and be a salesperson of yourself then basically. Yeah. And I mean, without that skill or without that drive that you had, you probably would have not have done those spec houses. 
So, I mean, and that's, that's the difference though with you too, because you, and I keep, I'm going to keep praising you for this because you do ask the questions you do go out and, and figure that you figured things out. I mean, there's not a lot of people willing to do that. They're stuck. They're afraid to do it. They're what if, what if, what if you just went out and did it, you took a risk, you know, instead of doing, being the investor, a real estate investor, you know, like everybody's trying to do, you want, yeah. you want to at that right turn, man, in the construction world, which I give you props just because you were always asking, you were asking how people with experience do it. You're also at going out and getting your own finances and investments and, and helping, you know, and that's what gets you started because you're not going to make a killing off your first house. Everybody thinks they're going to, it's no different than real estate, right? <laughs> let's, let, let's go there too. It's no different than real estate. Everybody thinks they're going to get their license and make a killing. Yeah. You know, there, I'm a big realtor, this and that, you know, and right now. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to go sell a house instantly. It's, it's hard. It's a grind. I mean, I've been doing it nine years. I'm, I'm getting traction now because I'm, I have a lot of referrals built mm -hmm. up and so on. But after nine years, it took, I mean, and, and it's a grind, but still with building too, you know, you're going to put up that first house and that's a representation of you. So that first homeowner that buys that first house you know, you have to treat them like they're, they're a king and a queen inside that house because they're going to refer you. If they love that house, everything's taken care of. You're dealing with the warranty work. You're on top of things. You're treating them like, you know, their family inside that house. That's only going to keep bettering you word of mouth, word of mouth. It keeps spreading. And eventually, you know, 10 years from now, I hate to say 10 years because everybody wants that instant gratification, okay. but you know, it's, it's a grind. It's a long-term play man i mean there's guys that have been doing this for 30 years and 20 years and you know they're getting traction now and so on but they they've they've optimized everything they know how to do it right and so on and and that's the thing i give you props for for starting out where you did and doing it the way you did because it's not easy so anyway anybody that's out there you listen to this guy right here because you know you got to learn to be able to get the finances. It's no different than investing too. I mean, you got to learn how to, where the money, where am I going to get the money? How am I going to finance it? Cause it's not just going to pop up mm -hmm. in front of you too. So, yeah, exactly. um, so you're, you're, so we talked about your designs as far as your spec homes and how you came up with them. You, you did two of them, right? And you sold one of them. We are, uh, we just we just wrapped up our third one, so I just okay, nice marketing material for the third one, um, and the first one was sold, yeah. Okay, and are you starting to get any traction on customs with those? Or are you still just doing? You are getting customs yeah, now. Finally, uh, we're we're getting uh, multiple uh, people interested in you know, building uh, our specs in their lots. Nice, so, good thing. Yeah, so that's where it all starts right there. So. So as far as like, let's go, let's rewind a little bit. So when you first started your company, I know you were with your uncle and, and so on. Did, were, did you use a lot of your uncle's subcontractors or how did you go about choosing your subcontractors or figuring it out? Because that's a big factor too. You know, I mean, we personally as a company have been through the test, test with certain subcontractors. We're really loyal to the ones that have been good to us. We've had our trim carpenters for a long time. We've had cabinet guys for a long time, concrete guys and so on. So how did you choose your subcontractors or what were the trial and errors with that whole thing? <laughs> and there's that, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my uncle, yeah, he had a Rolodex of, uh, subcontractors at the time, but you know, uh, we vetted each and every one of them, you know, we judge people or judge companies on their quality, mm -hmm. how organized they are, their cleanliness, and then their character. Okay. So we approached these subcontractors left and right, uh, you know, whenever we had uh, a job for them, and we judged them based on those characteristics. Um, and if they fit the part, you know, we'd uh, give them a shot at bidding for the project. And then once we take it a step further, uh, we look at their work. That's very important, very important. Can't stress that enough. Um, whenever you want to hire a subcontractor, make sure you vet them personally and, you know, with their trade. So you, there's a lot of people that, can, uh, that say they can paint, 
<laughs> and, you know, don't get me started on that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now here and there, so you got to make sure uh, that you know they say who they are. They 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 say who they are, who they say they are. There we go, mm-hmm. and then they can do what they say they can do. So I mean, your vetting process with that, and I mean, don't get me started on the. We'll get into the painting thing too, because those that's a hard one to find. Yeah. But um, your vetting process, obviously, cl- quality, cleanliness, character. So basically, you're 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 first introducing or talking to them too. You're talking to them about what are you asking them? There's how long they've been in business. You know, are you going? And that here's another thing: Are you going off the actual number? Are you? Is the lowest man win? Is that how you're playing it, or how are you doing it? Because some people just go off the lowest guy, which and I'm a big believer in. You get what you pay for to an extent. I mean, you can pay somebody a lot of money and they'll still mess up, but you 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 gotta ju- be a good judge of character too, as you know too. So how are you vetting these guys? Let's go yeah. deeper into that. Okay. So uh, whenever we first uh, meet. I'm asking them uh, about their experience, you know, who they work for, um, if they have a portfolio that they can share. And then uh, um, I'm looking at their job site. So I'm basically walking around like new neighborhoods, mm-hmm. seeing what's going on, and then taking notes and then approaching those guys uh, to see if they, you know, they want to do work for me. Nice. So you're actually seeing reality in their work too and going around and yeah, which not a lot of guys do. They usually just look them up on Google and then they'll bid them. You know what I mean? So and it well, it's, and that's the thing with subcontractors too. And I've talked about ours that we're very loyal. We have a lot of good guys that have done our work for a while. I, I, I always check the bids. I mean, that's another thing because some of these guys, you know, when things are going good, times are good like they are now as far as, as the building industry right now you know, prices keep mysteriously going up sometimes, you know, and you got to watch your numbers and question things. And, and I, we, we do it all the time where, you know, why was this stucco on this house at this amount per foot? But then this house was, you know, four grand or five grand less. So where's these numbers? Oh, I didn't see that. My bad. I must have messed up with something, you know? So, and, and it's just, it's like you said, though, I mean, with the painter thing, I can go on, we, we finally got a great painter, really good painter, the guy's phenomenal, and um, very meticulous, covers, every, his prep work is insane, compared to the last painter we had, which did barely any prep work, kind of slopped it on, I'd always, we, our punch out system, you know, with our punch outs is pretty in depth, and, and we would be there for days, and I don't have time. I do the punch outs personally, and I don't have time to be there for days. I have time there to be be there once and then check it again, and that should be it. That's that's how it should go. But it wasn't going that way with our last painter, and it was bad, especially when you're doing level five smooth coat on walls and so on. You can't hide anything. So you know, instead of the sk- the texturing like some some builders are doing which there's nothing wrong with that, but you, you figure it out in, in this painter that we have now is a lot more money than the last painter we had. Well, I can see why now, because you start to see the differences in the prep work, how he does it. He goes back a second time. We, he did an epoxy floor for us. He hated it. He said, I'm going to redo that again, or I'm going to re go over it with another clear coat and I'm going to do it this way. I still don't like it thing was i go the thing's freaking perfect man what are you talking about you don't like it so that right there stood out to me you know and i'm sure you're the same way with your subs yeah yeah most definitely so it's not always you know the cheapest one gets the job it's uh who's gonna do what they say they say they're gonna do Mm -hmm. those guys those are the guys you gotta keep on keep on your team so have you been pretty consistent with the subs that you've had? Obviously, you're newer, have you, but I mean, what are some of the trial and errors you've had to go to? Any nightmares with uh, with any of them yet? Or <laughs> so no nightmares yet. Uh, well, not, hopefully. Not. <laughs> Knock on wood, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so for the first spec house, man, I was extremely lucky. So all of those subs, you know, they did what they said they were going to do. And, you know, uh, we had punch lists, checklists to go through. But, you know, we once we got those done, you know, it was pretty smooth sailing. You know? <clears throat> yeah, so you're blessed, man, because that's usually not how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's usually yeah. something you got to manage or, or, or see or, you know, but, yeah, good for you. So you're you're still consistent with the guys you have right now? Have you made uh, any changes? No, or 
yeah. for the most part. But the main thing was like I was there most of the time, so yeah, messing around or. Which management's a huge thing because when you're there, they feel the, you know, they feel the pressure of having to get it done too. And if you could be there more than normal too, that's, that's a hundred percent a good thing too. But as, and that's what I wanted to get into with you too, as your projects start stacking up, now you're going to be doing more customs. Obviously you can't clone yourself. I've said that multiple times. I wish I can do that with myself, but you can't. So who's going to replace Johnny, Johnny Lee's place in the field? Cause you're going to have to eventually hire a superintendent. Cause you, and, but then that's where a lot of your core values, which I saw on your website are going to have to be in place too. So finding that right person, that's going to be a meticulous as you are, yeah. you know, that's how you're going to do that. What do you think? And I went, cause you're going to start, you're growing and yeah. we, you know, we know you are. So. So once uh, I get to a point where I can't be a one man show anymore, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to do everything I can to make the systems and processes as easy as possible um, to where, you know, if somebody has a question on how to do this or why this is, why it is, um, it's all going to be laid out on uh, checklist, punch list, whatever you call it. And then I would go about looking for uh, people to replace me in that position and so forth. So like a superintendent, project manager, selections, uh, interior designer, stuff like that. Um, but until then, I'm going to be working on those systems and then finally have the chance to hire those people. So you're currently working on them, those systems, I'm guessing now then too. And you know, are you, what are you doing? Are you doing more of a book? Are you going to do more of, let's say, one-on-one uh, -on -one training per, you know, you're next to them. How are you going to go about it? Okay. So yeah, it'll be most likely be a one-on-one -on -one training. Yeah. I'm going to be riding my coattails for like uh, a few projects at least. Unless I can find, you know, like one of those experienced guys, mm -hmm. 20 years under the belt and willing to Gotta work. Got to pay for those guys, though. Yeah, willing to work for somebody like 20 years younger than them. So that's that's also another challenge I'm facing as well because I don't want to hire too late to where I won't be able to support my business. But I want to hire, I don't want to hire too soon to where it'll affect my projection in the future. Yeah, and that's a big choice you're going to have to make too, because obviously you're still early on in the company. You're only two years in, so I mean, obviously the, there's some money and, and gross starting to come into the business. But is it enough to satisfy an experienced superintendent? Or are you going to have to hire somebody where you're going to have to train yourself too? So I mean, that's why I had you on too, because I I want to talk about you know with you because you're new to the business too. I've had a lot of guys that have been in business for a long time on my show, you know, and and we've talked. Everybody's hit kind of different angles, but with you, I've met I haven't had somebody that's new, and and I want to talk about these hurdles too with you as far as how you're going to face them and so on because people want to hear it too. That's the thing because I'm interested to hear it, you know, and I'm here to help too. You know, the one, when you said one-on-one, -on -one, one -on one-on-one training, that's huge because you're, you're learning the business. Um, have you fully learned the business enough? I mean, I don't, yeah, there's so, I'm still learning, man. Like I am still learning and I've been doing this a long time and I see new stuff every day. I go to the jobs that they, guys ask me questions too. And I figure it out a lot of the time because I've been around the houses, but the structurally these houses are so, so unbelievable that you really have to learn. And I'm still, you know, asking questions and learning and so on. It's a never ending process too, you know, and the best experience like we talked about is hands on. So, you know, and, and that you got a hurdle. I mean, that's the next hurdle ahead because as the more you grow, that's what's going to happen. You can't be on every site and the busier you get, then your jobs start kind of getting left a little bit. The guys start maybe slacking off a little bit or, trash starts piling up because they're throwing stuff all over and they're not keeping clean jobs so this is the stuff you have to think about yeah uh still working on that man <laughs> <laughs> still working on that you know still early in the business to where uh, i'm i'm not forced to make that decision yet but uh hopefully i am soon you know because i feel it's a good thing to have a little bit of pressure on your back mm -hmm. to where you can make those decisions and stick with it and learn as you go.
So basically, man, my business is learn as you go. The whole yeah. thing is just learn as you go. Like mm-hmm. I said, I didn't even know what a two by four was. <laughs> um, multiple houses at once. And, you know, so. Yeah. And I mean, and that's, it's, it, it's a scary approach to go by, but it still can be possible too. And you are, you are continuously learning each and every house you build, you're going to get better too. And like I said, you've been asking questions to the right people. You have the group of people that where you can connect and ask and so on too. You know, I've learned a lot and I, I even still, I mean, I get on my brother about stuff too. I mean, I see stuff that he misses, so on. I go to the jobs, I check them, I see, you know, why is that like that? That should be this way because I'm one-on-one with the customers all the time. My brother, not so much. So I know what to expect too. And that's why I do our punch outs too and so on. He loves having me there because I'm very meticulous. I touch all the trim, I touch everything and so on. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's been a lot. You learn a lot. There's a lot more to learn too. I mean, we have the tools in place now to where we, we've implemented, you know, I just hired a customer service guy. We didn't have good customer service in my opinion. Um, and so finally I, obviously I have the reins now to where I can hire a customer service guy and he's full time. So he's dealing with everything as far as our warranties. He's, I mean, if you need a plumber five years later, you call Max. That's the way I look at it because I want us to be the gateway to every one of our customers. So if you know, you're in a Ryman home, I don't care if you're the second owner, third owner, fourth owner, if you're in one of our homes, it is a Ryman home. I want you to call Max. If he's, you need to schedule a plumber, electrician, anything, he can hook you up with that number and so on like a concierge. So that's keeping us top of mind as a builder too. And I've talked about this to other builders and they're like, yeah, that's great. That's a great idea. And, and that's a great selling point too. I mean, it's a huge selling point in this business because every customer I deal with, especially in the cow, when you're dealing with two and a half, $3 million houses, you know, they want that. They expect that. They expect a service, you know, that is, and now I've even had, now I even have our own interior designer set up now too, where we partnered with a giant firm and they're doing our interior design on four of our projects. And then I have an architect who's doing all the art, everybody, everything ties in. And that's how, how this business works too. So, and you're, I'm sure you're starting to figure that out. Yeah. It's all right here. (laughs) (laughs) um what about what are you doing as far as bookkeeping and your finance end of things are you handling that right now because you're still still a one-man team yeah so uh just using all the tools that i can uh, yeah you know make would make the job easier and then as far as like your selections and everything too you're you're are you handling the selection probably on the custom end of in the beginning uh i had a lot of help from family members Okay. Because uh, they were like, well, one of my brothers, he's very into trends and stuff like that for housing. Okay. He was like throwing me ideas here and there, here and there, and I'd ask him, and then he'd help me out. So a few of the houses that we've done so far, is, he has his fingerprint on that as well. Was, uh, was that one with the gold faucets and black cabinets? Was that one of your houses? I think you just posted it on your story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of yours? Yeah. That, that, was, uh, that was my idea, actually. Nice. Nicely done. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. By Pinterest, actually. There you go. So, you know, uh, ideas can come from anywhere. But in the beginning, <clears throat> I, I pretty much relied on the uh, for the selections part. It was based on him and then my feedback and bounce back and forth. You know, see what worked and then mm-hmm. how, how well it would mesh with the local one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, Pinterest is a hell of a... Mm-hmm. Hell of a thing. I mean, it's, it's, I I don't know how many pictures I've had where somebody brings me their phone. They say, can you do this? You know, especially being the custom end of things too. um, dealing with customers. It's, it's a great thing. I mean, I did a stair rail at our model home off a Pinterest picture too. So it's, it's, uh, you know, in the cabinetry, we've done it. We did a TV built in recently on a customer's house off of it too. So it's, uh, it's a great thing. It's a magical thing, right? <laughs> but like you said, man, uh, you partnered with an interior design group, mm-hmm. a major one. Um, and that would be nice um, at the moment, you know, to help me out uh, as far as building future projects. But what I would really like to do is like, um, you know how those track builders, they have like interior uh, design studio in-house where you can basically build the house inside that office. 
mm-hmm. I'll be able to provide that for you know my future clients or anybody that's wanting to build a house with us, <clears throat> where you know they can make all the selections, they can see it come to life via a rendering, stuff mm-hmm. like that. That'd be pretty cool uh, sometime in the future. So you know I have ideas about that, but we're gonna. Stay on track right now. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I, <laughs> I don't blame you, man. And it, well, the thing is too with like, uh, there's there's these builders with the design studios and everything too. That's okay. That's why they are track home builders. If you want to go that direction too, there's nothing against track home build or production builders is 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 a way to say it too. You know, because they do heavy production, and then you know that's that's what they're known for doing. It's not the most quality or so on, but they 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 give you your certain choices, your selections, and that's it. So maybe that's where you change the game as you do more quality production rather than quantity production. See what I mean? Because those 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 track guys are doing all quantities. That's all they're out about is how many numbers of houses can I pump up pump out at once at a low cost to make you know, this X amount of money with us as a custom builder, you know, to have a show, we have stuff in house in our office. We have like a, a material room where we have material boards and so on and then roof tile selections and all that kind of stuff. But majority of our selections is, is out of office. We have our vendors, we take them to our vendors. We have a granite yard that goes on for a mile. You know, we have a tile selection where the showroom is unbelievable and, but this, that's the caliber we are in. You want to bring these people to where they have the selections where they can make them and so on. But back to the designer thing, the importance of a designer. And I learned that uh, over the past couple of years. And that's why I partnered with this firm because they do a tremendous job. Is It's, it's the details. The details and the selections and everything too is... Yeah, as a builder, you know a lot and you know what to do. And, and I have my visions and I've designed houses too. Um, and I've sold the houses I've designed. But these guys, they bring even more to it. Everything pulls together. It's hard to make everything pull together, including the furniture, including the ceiling details and the wall colors and everything. It's, it's a hard thing to do. And when you can, when you can do that perfectly in a higher end caliber of house, working with an architect that uh, puts a visual, you know, a visual aspect of things that you've never seen before. And then you get it to uh, the designer who actually turns things into another adds drapery pockets, adds all this different stuff. Yep. Then it goes to a builder. That's a perfectionist. You got something special going on. And that's where we're starting to get to that level of, of build. I just had somebody post on social media she was so excited to partner with such a great team and she did a video, you know, posted the video of our model and then tagged, you know, three of the companies that were, were all partnered together. And cause she even was, was ranting raving on the phone, like how excited she is and how about the process and how she's looking forward to, to an easy process. Let's face it. Building isn't easy, you know, but you have us, that's our job. And you know, that doing what you're doing now is that we have to make it easier for people. That's, should be your mission too is just to make it as easy as process because so many people get screwed in this industry that's actually one of the reasons i don't want to talk about that <laughs> can i go into it uh, go. A little, a little bit oh go into it yeah no it's fine and, uh, open mic on this podcast man go right into it so i had a friend uh, who was building a house with a local builder yeah i'm not gonna name names um but uh, he was promised, you know, a uh, build time of like five, six months and then within a certain budget. Uh, it actually took him twice the amount of time and he went beyond the budget. And I was like, man, these local builders, is this how they're really doing it? You know, because that's very, very, it's not right. It's not right. So that's one of the reasons why I actually got started as well while I was, you know, training and everything. And uh, this ain't the right way to do it to show people you know or <clears throat> find a way to build trust uh with you know the client be, be a builder um and yeah that's one of the reasons why i got started as well <clears throat> well that's funny that's your that's basically right there is your mission i mean that's your mission behind what you're doing and so on too and and 
like I can respect that too because everybody I've had on this show has similar objective and a similar mission. That's what, that's what the the real build is about helping people know what to look for in construction and real estate, but it's also in all the other industries like interior design and so on, but it's also about bringing people like-minded people together that really have a focus on helping the customer and doing business the right way. And and people go with us because they see that we're not the cheapest builder. And I've, rep- I've repetitively said this too, is, and I say it to people, I, I set my expectation up front is where I go, Hey, listen, we're not going to be the cheapest. I'm by far not the most expensive, but we're probably that middleman that's going to do the, one of the best jobs you're going to see. Plus we're our follow up and our customer service. If we mess up, we're going to show up, you know, and we've messed up before. I'll admit my wrongs. You know, we had uh, a, a closing, uh, on a house we closed too early we should have not closed and we felt rushed but we did it we should have not a said yeah we're going to close on this date we should have spanned it out two weeks well you know the customer gets there we're doing the walk through they're still cleaning there's still issues they're still so it was a lesson learned that we need to back up and go back to our old way of saying no we're going to close on this date you need to listen to us as a builder sometimes you got to put your foot down and you know, so we've made our mistakes, but you learn from them too. And, and it really is about to me. And, and I know my brother's the same way is delivering the best product that we possibly can. And, and having people rant and rave about your family and how you do it and how you do it too. And, and how great you are even after the build. And I've told this story. I mean, I had a guy, five-year-old house way out of warranty, plumbing issue happened pipe was just, pipe was left loose by the plumber they didn't tie it down to the to the or they didn't strap it down to the stud anyway dry go figure dry loose drywall screw was put in never taken out just sitting there pipes loose boom 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 against the drywall screw because of the vibration every time the toilet would flush yeah. water break so anyway, he calls me right away. I got a plumber there instantly. Plumber goes, oh, yeah, there's a water leak, blah, blah, blah. I look through the hole because the plumber had everything cut out. What do I see? A loose pipe. I asked my plumber, who did the plumbing here? It wasn't you, was it? You know, I like to mess with them a little bit. No, no, that, that wasn't me. You know, they blame somebody else. But anyway, it was the plumber's fault for what I just said. And we five years later could have said, you know, it is what it is. You're out of warranty. You know, you're going to have to pay. We can get the painters here and so on. Guess who covered the whole entire thing? Us. But since then, have we got, you know, and the guy was like, he was like, well, thank you. You guys, we covered the paint, the patching, the new, you know, the drywall, everything. We covered everything. And since the guys referred us twice to different people, you know, and, and that's the difference though, too, is, I mean, a lot of builders don't do those above and beyond things. They think about money. Well, that you're going to make that money back later on, you know, whatever you do, it's all about helping your customer, you know, and going above and beyond. I just helped an older lady with a gutter Her house was built in 2001. You know, I helped her out with her gutter because she had a gutter problem. She paid the guy direct. I didn't make any money out of it, but I hooked her up with my gutter guy who doesn't even do side residential. He just, he just does, you know, new construction, but he's like, cause it's you, I'll do it. And he charged her probably nothing, but you know, it's just those little things, man. And uh, see, it's like, I'm teach. This is me and you talking because you're new. But I mean, it's it's just I've we I've learned a lot in this business and how to do it too. And I'm sure you you already are too, and you're doing a good job at it. And that's for something sure. I'm actually striving for as well. You know, you said you took care of your customers even beyond the warranty uh, uh, time frame. And that's uh, starting out. You know, I'm I'm only two years in, so that house that, that we did complete, it's only been completed about a year now. A year, mm-hmm. And I haven't had any recalls or anything like that of warranty work. So <clears throat> for me to prepare for that, you know, I want to be able to do what you do. Mm-hmm. I want to have a guy or a team in place to handle every single warranty claim that there ever is with one of our homes. Um, and that's something I'm currently working on. So I actually got one idea from uh, Brad Blair. I listened to your Brad Blair, Brad Blair podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, he said um, he did a follow up in one month, follow up in three months, follow up in six yeah. months, you know, nine months, 12 months. Always keeping tabs on your homeowner or your clients. And then, you know, figuring out what they need in that time frame, stuff like that. 
So, you know, listen, if uh, you're not listening to the Real Build podcast, <laughs> you want to feel better, you better listen. You always want to pick up some tips here and there, uh, as I specifically did. So, and then also, man, in the future, I want to be able to, like, I had an idea of what if it's possible to turn this more of into like a customer service uh, building business. So you know how uh, some people would submit warranty claims and they'd go unheard of for like about a month, two months, you know, before someone responds. <clears throat> I want to be able to, you know, have somebody there within 24 hours, you know, uh, f- figuring out what's going on. And then within a week, depending on the severity of the warranty claim, you know, have it all handled, hashed out, taken care of. And that's uh, another idea. So, yeah. And with the, I mean, what that's with the warranty claims and I'll keep referencing us of how we work them too. That's why I hired an actual warranty guy that that's under a payroll and just because I wanted a quick response. So our response time to warranty is usually the next day. You know, I don't like, people don't like to wait these days and you can't let warranties linger on for over a week anymore. I mean, cause you're just going to, it's not good. And, and so that's why I have him. He actually goes to do the warranty. He'll look at it. If I need to be involved or my brother needs to be involved, then we go. But most of the time he can handle it. He calls our subs to get them there that need to be there too and gets them there fast too. So we're, that's why I hired this guy. He's doing a tremendous job. Shout out to Max out there, but um, no, he's doing a, he's doing a hell of a job, man, because he's, he literally, he's his responsiveness he's there he drives to the location he goes and looks at it like i said if he needs us there because he doesn't know what's going on we'll go out there we'll look at it i'll tell him too if the customer no we're not taking care because i've had some customers do one of them recently said his fence was crooked it, it wasn't crooked like you know this guy's just this he overthinks things love the guy great customer but he overthinks things and so, you know, there's some stuff where I'm a little bit more firm where I put my foot down with customers too, but I, and I also know how to talk to them and, and so on. But, you know, you got to do the right thing. And if the response rate has to be quick, if you're in this business too, that's, that's where we're above of a lot of other people too, is our response rate. You know, people, people love that fast response and, and they appreciate it too, because they, they're, you're, they're top of mind to you. You know, and that's why I'm doing like with responding, like with your customers too. the follow up, like you said, you know, even after one year, still check in, you know, a lot of these builders after one year, that's it. They don't talk to anybody. A lot of them don't even check in. They just wait for the call. Yeah. But, you know, after one year, still, still mm-hmm. follow up. I sent them Christmas card, handwritten cards, like, you know, the handwritten card oh, things is so important. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I do that even in, and it's huge because people know that I'm there. Also, I do home watch. My brother does home watch. It's a side business. You know, that's another thing we do. So they're still getting that permanent week to week service from us too, because a lot of people here aren't full time, but we're continuing to, you know, cause I got the connections. If there's something wrong while they're not here, boom, I got my, you know, when Irma happened, guess who was getting their roof tile fixed faster than they would have if they didn't have me you know, my roofer was doing side stuff for me and so on. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's top of mind, man. It's taking care of people. That's what business is all about. And if you do that, you're going to exceed and you're going to go way above. Cause you said that's your mission from the beginning too. seeing other builders and how they handled things. There's a lot of them here, but that's why we stand out. People are still going to go with those builders, you know, but uh, they'll learn their lesson. And on their second house, they'll be knocking on your door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um what about well, let's talk about it a little bit what are you doing for sales and marketing now um you know you as a new builder are you doing any kind of marketing uh so marketing it's mainly ads you're running facebook ads facebook ads instagram ads uh a few google google ads here and there uh for exposure mainly um i want people to know you know empire builders is here in lafayette that we're building these types of houses, you know, pushing the envelope in this area. And also, you know, at the same time, we can build your custom home for you. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, that's as far as the marketing side goes. 
uh, that's one thing I'm actually struggling with, you know, because uh, I believe I have a great product, but, you know, nobody's going to buy it if they don't know about it. So, so, so what about, what about the people that bought, you, so you, yeah, you sold one of the specs that you had, right? They're, the people are living in it currently. Yeah. So why not? you know, go knock on their door, say, Hey, would you guys mind promoting me? You know, maybe they're, they're housed everything in the house. What can I do to exceed your expectation? You know, obviously, you know, them. you met them. It was your spec house. You know, is there anything I can do or you guys can do to refer me out? Do you have any friends or family that are looking for a builder? I'd appreciate the referral. You know, I would reach out to them because word of mouth is the most powerful thing too. And we, you know, that's, that's one thing we focus on is the word of mouth, tell your friends, you know, this and that. Um, if they have a bad experience, we're on them like a fly on, you know what? So, you know, we, we want to make that bad experience better because we don't want that. You know, I always say we've never been sued. We've never been a court. We always take care of people. We always figure it out, you know, and, and we've had customers that were a pain to deal with. Everybody's going to come across them, but we've had awesome customers too, but either way we take care of both. So and that's what increases that marketing too. I mean, you could Facebook market all you want. I do it too. You know, you might get a little traction here and there. Somebody commenting how much per square foot. That's a common question yeah. I always get, which I hate because um, we're custom. But, you know, other than that, it's, it's, it's tough, man. You got to Google ads. We run a lot of that. But um, it's, yeah, there's a lot of word of mouth. I'd be approaching those people at that first house and seeing what you can do to get some marketing one-on-one -on -one marketing with them that'd be yeah. my strategy to it too yeah i'm glad you brought it up man i'll be doing that yeah, <laughs> I yeah. knock on their door see if you can get a video with them see if you can do something with them tell them tell their friends say hey i'm a new builder i hope you enjoy your experience in the house and you're liking it if i can do anything for you let me know uh but i appreciate a referral if you guys can, cause I'm really trying to just, and tell them what you just told me, your mission statement, mm -hmm. what you're trying to do. I see these other builders. Don't ever be afraid to say that. I mean, I see these other builders. You don't have to say specific builders, but say, I don't like, I don't talk bad about other builders, but I see some, how some of them have ran their businesses and I'm trying to change that. And it starts with you guys. You're in one of my houses. I'd appreciate a referral, something like that. Yeah. Definitely. re listen to this use it i'm telling you <laughs> listen to it again man. <laughs> yeah, man you know this is what this is about you know we're always trying to help other people mm -hmm. ourselves you know so you never know whenever you're going to find a little nugget here yeah yeah exactly it's, and so let's let's go into customer service what are you doing with that house currently that you sold a customer service end of things yeah. so uh man i've been doing that one, three, six, nine, 12 month uh, checkup uh, where I, you know, uh, I'm actually handwriting letters just like you do. Nice. I got that idea from you. Um, I'm also driving by the property, making sure everything is all right on the exterior. I'm still in contact with the homeowners. Um, but luckily <coughs> nothing has gone wrong yet. Yet. So <laughs> I'm going to still um, keep in contact with them consistently as possible and uh, just keep on following up whenever they need something. yeah good and then yeah obviously keep following up even after the fact too and just yeah claim it as your own man the house is your baby so just take care of it that's the thing that's the way to look at it too you know because it's your name on that house and that's how we are too it's when it's a rhyming house uh every that's the way and i'm not bragging or anything like that but we've gotten to the point too where every single real estate agent that lists one of our houses say this is another house built by rk ryman construction so that speaks tenfold i've used that in our advertising too because that's how powerful our brand is and the quality and how much we preach about it too you know because i'm not going to compete with these guys that are less money than me i tell people that too i don't waste my time you know, you know, that time's valuable. We, we don't, we don't have much of it. So just, I'm not going to, there's a lot of guys out there that undercut us all the time. And I, that's why I always ask people who they're bidding, who they're talking to as builders. And there's new ones around here. I won't even deal with them because I can't compete. I can't. So I had a guy from Arte call me today. He asked me, oh, there's a Cape Coral builder that's building for 125 a square foot. I go, what? And he goes, yeah, 125 a foot. I go, I don't even think you get that up north, man. 
And he goes, yeah, I was a little skeptical. I go, I, yeah, something's wrong, man. I don't, he's like, you think something's wrong? Uh, he's like, well, how much are you a square? I go, on average, 375 and up, but we're a custom builder, you know? So, and we're doing, these are like commercial buildings down here. We got pilings, we got all this concrete. He, he's like, well, you, what do you think? And I was like, I wouldn't do it. He goes, you wouldn't do it? I go, no. I mean, I'm in the business, man. I I know what's a red flag and what isn't. And 125 a foot, I don't even think you get that up north, you know, and their stick build up north. And so he, he told me, you know, I'm going to help him out. He sent me a feature sheet and so on. I'm going to look through it. But even with a track home builder, like a, you know, a Pulte, Lennar, these big builders, you can't even get that kind of money, especially in this area. Mm-hmm. So anyway customer service is huge man that's that's a big focus of yours too with you like everybody else and it's this was this has been great man because and it's it's great to have you on like i said you being new to the business you um learning the process and so on so if somebody wanted to get into this business too having your perspective and how you're doing it i know a lot of it is just kind of learn as you go, which is fine, you know, and, and you're also like, I, I keep preaching too. I don't think you've given yourself enough credit because you do ask a lot of questions to people. You find the right resources and so on, which I give you a lot of props because not a lot of people would do that. Um, cause you're actually going out and doing it. You're spending money on groups like Arte, you know, finding guys that are in there and doing other things too and getting out there. So you need to give yourself a little more credit. Uh, Cause you're not just winging it, but um, you know, but you're doing the right thing, man. And that's, that's, what's going to put you above the rest. Plus you have that real estate license like myself, which goes, it, it's huge. And it's huge to have that too. I mean, because you, you can do your work in both world worlds uh, and you, you know, you're saving money for your business, obviously by listing your own houses and so on smart. And um so I give you a lot of props and this has been good, but I, I always like, cause we're getting to the end here. I always like to get into you personally. I've asked this question to everybody. This is a big one. You got to go deep with me. Don't go short on this one. Cause I'm going to pull more out of you. Um, you, you built, you're building an amazing company, obviously, and it, your, your, your growth's continued every single day. So what lessons have you learned throughout your journey so far that you can apply to your own business or that we can apply to our own businesses or our lives that, you know, will help us personally grow? That one's a deep one, man. And I've been asking this to everybody because I get a different answer every time, but they're all deep and everybody has, you know, it's perspective on life. Yeah. Yeah. Man, the biggest tip I can give somebody, uh, whether in life or in business is, to stay committed to their vision. Uh, I'm always, you know, struggling with that uh, as far as where I, whenever I told you I went welding to college to apartment investing and then to the construction industry, I decided to commit. So that's one of the biggest tips I can give somebody wanting to start out uh, in building or, you know, uh, making a life-changing decision personally. <clears throat> so you're going to stray here and there, as you have seen, like I have, uh, but you always have to remind yourself of that vision that you cast whenever you first started. Um, and man, I still struggle with that, but you know, you always have to remind yourself about that. Uh, another thing, I'm a big, I'm a very big proponent of this is always trying to improve, whether personally, financially, spiritually, or physically, always look for ways to improve in every aspect of your life. <clears throat> so it could be just a little inch here and there, or you know, as much as you want, as far as you can go. Always, always, always try to improve in every facet of your life. Um, another thing is like how we are in Arte. Mm-hmm. You got to surround yourself with the right people. Um, if you hang around, you know. Uh, thugs, gangsters, you know, that mess around with drugs and stuff like that. Uh, most likely you're going to end up, you know, in a similar position as them. Whereas if you surround yourself with Bill, uh, Brad, Damien, you know, you might end up being one of the top builders in the United States. Uh, so that's another tip. Um, 
So the final tip I want to give is always look for the positives in every situation, uh, no matter what goes on, because not everything is going to go your way. Um, there's going to be so many uh, problems you have to face, you know, obstacles you have to climb, stuff you have to get through, whether it be, you know, on the outside or on the inside. <clears throat> Always try to search for that positive, you know, remind yourself, hey, man, you know, I'm actually alive today. So that in itself is a good thing, you know, or let's say, shoot, if one of my spec houses burned down, man. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty terrible situation to be in, you know. It's a lot of money involved, but, you know, um, look to the positive of that. So why did that happen? How can I improve from that? And then how can I prevent that from happening again? So whenever you take those steps to, you know, search for the positive in every situation, you're going to be happier in life and have a positive outlook. I love that brother right there. See, look at that. that. That was deep right there, man. And I love the commitment thing too, because I mean, we all struggle with, you know, staying committed to something too. It's hard. I mean, and as you know, this industry is not easy. And I, that's why I keep giving you credit for what you're doing too, because you're going through the challenges and the struggles to get to a different level. And it, it takes time and not a lot of people are willing to put in that time you know, and it takes money and not a lot of people are willing to take the time and struggle for a little bit and go through the trial and errors of everything too. And you're, the, you're going through it. You're figuring it out, you're figuring out the right things to do and so on. And you're not just winging it, like you kind of said, because I know you, but, but you are, you know, you're learning and every, every single day you're learning more and more, which I give you a lot of credit. So yeah, I love that answer. Good job on that too. One thing I like, I always like to ask too is, you know, I asked about your past, but let's talk about your future. So where will Johnny Lee be in the future? Who will you be 10, 12, 15, 20 years from now? Where are you going to be? Man. <laughs> <laughs> What's that long-term vision? Long-term, long-term. Uh, so where are we at right now with Empire Builders? Um, we're still in Lafayette, but I would like to, you know, establish a name for us here locally and then expand to neighboring cities and then you know maybe even around the whole united states so that that's one of the uh, small goals that we have <laughs> um but yeah that's uh, most likely where i plan to head but you never know man uh i'm always living in the present so I'll take one day at a time you know plan accordingly for that day and then attack it so I can't tell the future, but I'm <laughs> in for it, you know. But you got the goals to do it, man. That's yeah. the thing. You got to have those goals and those long terms. Mine's similar. I want to be one of the biggest builders in the state of Florida, but I want to be a custom builder, not, you know, I, I want to keep our brand or our quality and everything and still be able to manage that too. So to figure out how to manage that, that's what I'm going to figure out. I'm making the connections to get better as a company too. You know, I've had you guys on here that are in all these different industries and states too, but even in state people too, I have the connections I've met with met great attorneys. Uh, Sean Henry who's part of this. He was in the syndicate too. He's big at one of the biggest solar companies. So now I have a solar company that I, a connection right there too, you know, for, cause I'm starting to see more houses wanting solar. So, which is the state of Florida. I don't know why it took so long down here, you know, but, um, but anyway, it's just, it's making the right connections, man, like you said, and, and building up to that goal, too, of that overall goal. I don't know if I'll be the biggest in the country. I don't know if I want to be a big Pulte uh, type builder, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll see where it goes, man. State of Florida is on my mind. I'd, you know, eventually love to be that, that aspect of it, too. So give you credit on that. So last question, the one I asked everybody what this show is about. What exactly do people need to look for when building a new home? And why should they choose Johnny Lee and Empire Builders as their builder of choice? Whenever you're uh, looking to build a new home, whether with uh, a builder or yourself or, uh, yeah, with a builder or yourself, man, Really, it all comes down to choosing the right builder, regardless. That's mm -hmm. all it is. So you want to choose somebody who's honest, you know, trustworthy, 
transparent as well and also can do the job that they say, say they're going to do. Um, and those four reasons are why you should choose Johnny with Empire Builders. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, nah, that's, I mean, you're, you're spot on once again, man, you want somebody, and I always tell people do your research when you're selecting a builder and, and you have commitment when they're interviewing you too, you know, that's the thing is you, I, and this is, this is more of a show because you were, you are new in the industry and I wanted to get into it with somebody that's newer is you should be when you are interviewing people too you should be telling them that mission don't ever shy away from that mission and be afraid of what other builders are going to hear or think or whatever you know because when people ask me my opinion on certain builders i always say i'm not going to bad mouth those guys that's not who we are as a company do i know i can do better yes do we deliver a better product yes do do you know do we bel- deliver a better experience yes we've been around as long as we have for a reason so i talk about us without talking bad about them you know because when you criticize people and so on you know that just makes you look bad it's not a good image so when and there's going to be people that ask you well what do you think about this builder you know they'll ask you i mean they've asked me a million times and i always i don't say oh, that builder sucks you know he builds a shit you know this and that no i i actually just say i go I don't bash anybody. Just do your research. You'll be able to figure it out. The internet's a hell of a thing. You know, just do your research, look into it, ask around, call people, call referrals. I'll give you 10. I mean, I can get into a lot of my customers' houses. I guarantee that builder can't. So there's a big difference right there. I can show you a lot of my customers' houses with them even being there. They'll leave. They're happy to let me show them as a reference too. I bet that builder doesn't let you do that. So that's just a way of doing it and dealing with that too, to better yourself as a builder. But <laughs> it's, it works, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. And, but I mean, anyway, it's, it's, it, this has been awesome, man. It, it's been great having you on and, you know, I know you're at the beginning stages and just keep going at it, man. I, I know that was one of your things too, just having the confidence to continue and so on which I can see that in you, you're asking the right questions, you're do, making the right moves too. So, I mean, I, I, I'm here if you need me as far as a reference to, you know that you call me anytime, you can message me anytime, you know that you got other guys too, that we're, we're we became friends with too. So, I mean, that's what it's all about. And yeah, I mean, you're doing good. Keep on moving forward, man. Three houses in uh, that's, that's more than a lot of other people can say for it too. And I know there's bigger things to come, but you just got to stay on it because I know it ain't easy, man. You're not showing it right now, but I know it's been, it's been hard. You're, you're putting that, that game face on right now, but you know, everybody goes through it and you're, you're, you've been dealing with it and you've been doing a good job. So you sold your first spec too. So I give you props on that. Two years, man. You're doing good. That's good for two years. Yeah. So actually, man, whenever you asked me to uh, be on this podcast, I was, starting to look back on what I've done so far and I really didn't appreciate it until I had to look back yeah and realize that man maybe you did do a good bit mm-hmm. you know, stop always stop um <clears throat> stop looking down on yourself or thinking you can do more here and there here and there but, you know just appreciate what you've done so far to see uh, how far you've come yeah, I mean, what you just said is huge, though. Think about that. I mean, you have accomplished a lot more than a lot of other people have or a lot of other builders have with little or no money, little or no experience and teaching yourself and learning and asking the right questions and and doing the things and actually listening. That's the difference, too. You're listening. You have open ears. You want to be successful in it, you know, but you're always going to you're always going to have that self doubt. But you just got to like you just said, you're reflecting on what you did, you, what you've done and what you've accomplished. That's huge, man. Three houses. I mean, they're specs. Now you're getting some custom people knocking on your door. Yeah. It's slow growth. This business is not easy and it's not a quick thing. And people that get into it that think it's going to be a quick money thing. It's not. There's yeah. so much that goes into it. I'm blessed to have my brother and my sister working with me you know, take a little bit of the edge off my back too, you know, now that we're built up and everything and, and it, it but it's, and have the people in house now too. And, and those, those chess pieces in place now to keep building up. I mean, my next level is to get a sales team going and so on and expand and keep moving and, and growing as a custom builder. But 
I've known that's going to take time. I mean, you asked me, how's your brokerage going and so on. I chose to go a different direction. I just want to focus on RK Ryman sales now because you play the cards that you've been dealt. So if you're, and I'm a big believer in that too. You know, I, we have a business now. Yeah, I'm doing real estate. I could build a real estate team, but my main focus has always been construction. That's what I love. That's my passion. Real estate, it's great. It's good side money. I love helping people on that end of things, but construction's always been my thing, design, all that kind of stuff too. So why would I go off of that and do a real estate brokerage when that's going to kill me and take me away from my focus of being one of the top builders in the area, in the state, in the, you know, and that's one of my missions too. And it's going to happen and you got to have that confidence that it's going to happen. And I've had people tell me it's going to happen. I wouldn't, you know, I've had people on the podcast that go, I wouldn't doubt that you're going to be a huge name in the state of Florida. It, but it takes time, man. That's the thing. And you're learning that too. And you can't just be down on yourself because yeah, <laughs> it takes time in this business. And I, and time goes quick in this business too. I mean, yeah. you're building a house. It's like, you, like here, I mean, some of these houses are taking us 18 months to build because they're big houses, but you're like, you look at the thing, it's already up. It's finished. You're doing the final walkthrough and you're like, man, I remember when we were going to contract on this thing. Like what the hell, man? <laughs> you forget, man. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, and then before you know it, it's like wow. But it's an awesome business to be in, man. And I appreciate you coming on too and talking with me. And and I wish you the best. I know you're gonna kill it. Uh, Louisiana doesn't know what hit them. You know, they're yeah. they're you're gonna be that that top builder with no time, man. Keep your head up. Keep doing what you're doing. And I thank you for taking your time to come on this has been awesome man and uh everybody that is listening i appreciate you guys listening uh i don't advertise i don't do any of that only thing i ask is if you like this five star it five star minimum please nothing less than five stars also comment it'll take you two minutes literally two minutes of your time probably even less i've written a comment on somebody else's podcast i think it took me 15 seconds so please do it And thank you guys for listening and I will see you guys on the next episode.